Hey Power Forwards, this is The Net on YouTube, and boy do we have some news today. Well, let's just say that it's the end of rookie training tournaments, so we're going to get into that. And we've got some news on The Net, the radio station for you. So let's just quickly do a little recap of what happened over the past week or so. Rookie training camps were in effect, and they were a blast to watch. Most of them were televised and I sincerely hope a lot of you definitely watched because oh my god I mean the talent you saw if you watched some of the Oilers rookie training camps you saw a lot of fa familiar faces the big three being Payarvi, Jordan Eboulé, and Taylor Hall. You got to see how they integrated into what would be assumedly the next generation. I actually watched a lot of Leafs rookie tournaments. Not sure why. Um, I can only assume that I did that because I've kind of been interested in the Leafs a little bit. The little Red Sox fan in me absolutely loves underdogs and loves an underdog story. I think that's why I love the Oilers so much. I saw a lot of talent in these young kids. You know, names that you didn't expect to hear or weren't used to, such as Pitlick, who was drafted 31st overall in 2010. This past draft season was in the Oilers rookie tournament. And what did he do? He scored three goals in three games. Actually, if you want to be more specific, three goals in two games. So you're looking at a lot of talent that just came out of the minors that are gonna just develop and maybe be common names come the next few seasons so that's gonna be really really interesting I'm really excited to see what happened with the Oilers rookies because you were looking at so much talent it was hard to, it was almost hard to stomach I mean names that I'm not even familiar with like there was Martindale who absolutely had this wonderful shot he was crashing the net but he couldn't get a shot off thanks to a defender cutting across in the Calgary game. That was the second game of the Oilers tournament. He dekes around and shoots the puck behind his back to give it to Alex Platt, who was coming with him on the wing, who got who then got it in the net. It was amazing. Excuse me. It wasn't Alex Plant. Alex Plant scored two goals in that game. That was actually, I believe, uh, Mark Thomas or Mike Thomas, Thomas, that was the name, um, just swings around behind him, it goes across the house, boom, and into, right next to his line mate's stick, and quick work, bang, bang, right behind Irving, who was the amazing Calgary goaltender, and I'm not gonna lie, I don't like Calgary, I'm an Oilers chick all the way, I've, Calgary is armed to the teeth in their rookie development camps, and they have a lot of depth down there, just thinking about uh, the goaltenders we saw out of the West were absolutely what you would expect from many Western goaltenders. They were capable, they were fast, they were easily w handled with the puck. I mean, it was amazing. Tyler Buns is actually a name that I really came to love. That kid was so capable in his young age. This kid graduated in June graduated from high school he's only 18 years old and he's playing in this rookie tournament now that might sound a little kind of iffy I mean all of them are 18 but 18 is usually a number reserved for forwards when it comes to this game you're looking at rookie goaltenders to be in their early to mid 20s for instance Howard who plays for the Detroit Red Wings, he's 26. So it's really a, a position where you're looking at a lot of age. And just to see this little kid, this seriously, he graduated. He just graduated. We're not looking at that kind of depth in UB's men's hockey, ice hockey, and they've been playing for year, for years, and our, our veteran goaltenders aren't that good. Tyler Bunce, when he makes it to the show, he will be amazing. I mean, he was all over that crease. It was his. I am known on the net for absolutely overemphasizing how awesome rookies are, and they deserve every moment of it because some of the, some of the kids coming into the league nowadays are so talented it could make your head spin. We're looking at future Vezina, uh, Vezina Trophy winners. We're looking at Hart Trophy winners. We're looking at kids that we can't even 
imagine. And you know, you're looking at rookie tournaments and you're thinking, where's the Halls? Where's the Everlays? Where's the Pyarvis? And you know, you're not really actually getting a lot of that that comes through. Hall, Pyarvi, and Everlay only played two games out of the Oilers rookie tournament. And yet, real stars, I think, were probably, if from the big three, Pyarvi was amazing. Eberlay, I didn't really hear much of. He got a goal in the first game. He got an, I think he got an assist in the second game, in the last game. Hall got a, a goal in the assist in the last game, an assist in the first game. So really, they didn't really do that much. But then you take in consideration Pitlick, Plot, and you think the big names aren't where the talent lies. The depth in these past drafts has been amazing, and we're looking at what these kids can do. So definitely check those out. Check them out. In other news, this Sunday the net goes live for the first time this season. The first showing of the net. I am so excited I can't even contain it. The net actually won me best DJ of the year last year with the radio station. So it's actually something I put a lot of heart and soul into. We've got a, we've got a time extension. Instead of from 11 to noon, it goes to 11 to 1230. So more hockey talk, and I guarantee you it will not be boring. There will be a lot of maybe some music, you know, trying to break it up. I don't want anyone to get bored, and hearing myself talk for an hour and a half is really kind of uh, droning. But lots of hockey news we got on the first show a whole off season to go into with even a Stanley Cup recap maybe. I know a lot of people listening to that probably know what happened in June. But we have to look at what happened just as a formality. And plus, who doesn't want to talk black out about the Blackhawks winning again? I mean, come on. The Stanley Cup final was pretty, ex pretty exciting. Also got the draft to go ahead of. We've got trading. And I mean, although the Sabres didn't do much, the Oilers have completely refaced their locker room with Sore not being able to come back. Morrow's gone. So what's... The Oilers got? Well, they're looking to see who's going to be the next captain. We're looking at the Blackhawks completely at carving out their locker room. A lot of the guys going to Atlanta. We're looking at Tampa Bay getting a huge resurgence of talent thanks to Z uh, Stevie Y becoming their general manager and bringing hockey focus back to the area. We're looking at a resurgence of successful southern teams. So let's see what can happen. Tune on to the net, WRUV.org, at 11 a.m. on Sunday morning. And you guys, feel free to call in and tell me what you think. Because I love phone calls into the net. I don't get many because a lot of people aren't up. As soon as that's done, I'll get the podcast up on uh, PJ and B, the blog, and maybe a few other sites. I'll also give you a link to where we can host the, the podcast and where you can find them regardless. I, that's all that, for this week. It's been a little while since I've made a video, so I feel like one was necessary. And dude, check this out. Turtlenecks. It's Buffalo, and it's already in the, it's already in the low 50s. It's September. Hockey season's coming, guys. It's almost October. See you later, Power Forwards. This is PJ the DJ, signing off.